Bakovic coming in quick, makes the incredible diving catch. My goodness, Bakovic. Germani trying to get there, goes back, and did he make another one? Holy guacamole, what a catch there. Get to the basket, passes it to Cortez, Cortez up, and one. That is exactly what I'm talking about. If you love MSU Denver sports, then what better place than to be here on the Road Run Review, the 30-minute magazine show that features all MSU Denver sports and their highlights of this past month. I'm Sla Zuby, and with me is my assistant, Sean Tafoya. Sean, how are you doing today? Assistant? Yeah? I thought that we were co-anchors. Well, not when I'm anchoring. You never know when I'm going to you know, need a coffee or a sandwich, so I'll just keep you around on the show just in case I need something. I don't see that in the script anywhere, <laughs> but on the show, we have highlights more highlights, and even more highlights. We're coming to the end of the regular season for both our men's and women's basketball seasons. Baseball and softball are in full swing, pun definitely intended. And we actually have highlights of us taking on a couple of women's basketball players in a new segment that we call NARPS. Yeah, Sean, and I know the audience is gonna love our NARPS package, but before we get to all that, let's bring in Juan Arellano to catch us up on the Roadrunners news. What's the latest, Juan? So if Sean is an assistant, what does that make me? I'll just stay clear off Celeste and call it a day. We have a ton to get to, so let's get right into it. First, we have to pay tribute to a couple of athletes who took home some awards this past month. Junior basketball star Giorgio Ordorf was named RMAX Academic Player of the Year for the second straight season. The Wollongong Australian native sports an impressive 3.99 grade point average majoring in biology. Ordorf is also tearing it up on the court, averaging 14.4 points per game and grabbing seven rebounds per contest. Volleyball All-American Brandy Tor had a sensational senior season and the four-year setter will be honored at the 43rd Annual Sportswoman of Colorado Ceremony in March. She will be given the Division II Volleyball Award after being named the RMAX Setter and Player of the Year in the conference. Great job, ladies, in not only succeeding in your sport, but representing MSU Denver with such high honors. And we have another women's basketball athlete who was honored as well in February. Senior Raquel Torres was selected to the WBCA and NABC Good Works team. This award is given to 20 men and women who provide huge accomplishments away from the court. Raquel is the president of SAAC, coordinates the end of the year award show, and she spends time volunteering at the Berkeley Maynard Care Center in activities department. That's gonna do it for me. I'm excited to see how our basketball teams are doing with the playoffs right on the corner. Thanks, Juan. So yeah, Sean, it's really great that these awards were given out and you know, road runners were able to receive those awards and it just says a lot about our athletic teams. Yeah, it's great to see these student athletes not only have success on the court, but off the court as well. Yeah, exactly. So let's get into some men's basketball. The Roadrunners are fighting tooth and nail for a high playoff spot for the RMAC tournament in March, and they needed to finish the season on a good note. They kicked off the month at the Auraria Event Center to get things going. MSU Denver took on the Eagles of Shadron at the Auraria Event Center. Brian Howard gets things started with back-to-back -back buckets. He would end the night with 22 points, 2 rebounds, and 3 steals. But it seems to be no match for the Shadron offense as they get things going with some buckets under the hoop. Then Cam Williams creating a foul and count the layup. And we can't forget about the one and only Buna Makeda with a block. The block seems to be the game changer that MSU Denver needed to get the offense scoring some extra points. Shadron gets some extra points on the scoreboard, but that's not much for Peter Moeller as he dishes in the layup, finishing the night with 15 points and 10 rebounds. That was the igniter that MSU Denver needed to keep their offense hot, and what better way to end the game than not only one dunk by Buna Makeda, but two. MSU Denver takes the dub 75-59. to Red and blue hosting Regis looking to pick up a big win over their crosstown rival. Pick it up first half, and it's Cameron Williams with the nifty spin and score for two. Cam Bam would end up with 20 in this one. Rangers looking to respond. Check out the drive and the block by Abad, but sticking with it and kick it out and Broadbeck nails the three to put the Rangers up by 10. Roadrunners can play that too though. Howard well beyond the arc. It's good, count it. Head to half number two. How about some more Howard? This time he drives in, dishes inside, and Boo puts the stuffing in the turkey. Big slam from the Senegal International. Seconds left, all tied up at 80. Corner three from Matoria is off, but Sienko picking up the trash and MSU Denver falls in a buzzer-beating heartbreaker. 
It was senior night for the Roadrunners as they took on UC Colorado Springs. Both teams start the game going back to back to exchange some points, but Alec Williams with a sweet move down low. The teams continue to go back and forth as three pointers are dished in by both teams. The back and forth action remains until Enrique Cortez gets the steal, passes it to Cam, and add another two for MSU Denver. Buna Makeda says, Not in my house, then goes in for the dunk. Man, put this guy in a slam dunk contest already. The red and blue remain hot and defeat the Mount Lions 65 to 59. Uh, it's meant a lot to me, actually. I mean, I've met so many, like the team. I mean, last year, this year, I made mean, so many good friends, like I probably have for the rest of my life. And uh, just like coaches, like pushing me every day, just getting better. I mean, it's been an overall great experience for me, and I, I wouldn't want anything else. It was, it was great. A lot of ups and downs, but um, I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade for anything. It was, it was, it was special. Special in what way? Just, just growing, just growing as a person, and and being part of this program. You know, it was extraordinary, and I was able to grow a lot as a as a young man. Here are the final standings in the RMAC, and they are brought to you by the Hilton Garden Inn. The Red and Blue finish fifth with a 12 and 10 record, and will face off against Regis University in the first round of the RMAC tournament. They'll head to the Regis Fieldhouse to exact some revenge on the Rangers for their loss at home. So make sure to keep up with the basketball teams at RoadrunnersAthletics.com to cheer them on in the postseason. We're just getting started here on the Roadrunner Review. Later on in the show, Sean and I will bring our less than stellar athletic ability to a women's basketball practice and show them that what they do is way easier than it looks. <laughs> but coming up next, Coach Tanya Jave's squad took on some athletes that definitely wasn't Sean and I with hopes of getting back to the RMAC tournament. We'll have all that and more coming up next. But Metro State corrals the rebound, another crossover, nifty move and one Jalen Smith. Brought to you by your number one volume Nissan dealers, Heinen's Nissan. Come in today and choose from nearly 1,200 new Nissans. Get 0% for 72 months with no payments for 90 days. During the bottom line event, lease the new Ultima for only $149 per month. Gives you both efficiency and performance. Looking for an SUV? Then choose the all-wheel drive Rogue at just $159 per month. Also available with optional third row seat. Bottom line savings at Heinen's Nissan in Aurora and Fort Collins. So glad you're back with us here on the Road Run Review and now we get into our women's basketball team who finished the month of January winning four of their last five games and hoping to make a spot in the RMAC playoffs. Yeah, and last time on the show we mentioned that they lost a huge piece in Emily Hardigan, but the play of Georgia Ordorf and Jalen Smith has really carried this team to a winning record and they took on Shadron State at home to keep those good times rolling. Ladies hosting the Eagles. Let's get it going, Janae Payne. But she's not shooting. She lays a great inside feed to Wellington, who finishes it for the deuce. Michaela Gonzalez now is wide open from mid range. She gets the shooter's touch, and we head to half number two. Georgia sags a little bit on Collins, and she nails the elbow jumper. Let's talk some more Georgia Ordor. Smith drives in, finds Georgia inside, and Georgia makes no mistake. Late in the game now, top of the key, she drives in, gets the contact and the foul. Georgia Ordorf with a career high 27 and the runners pick up the dub. Kind of told us to like stay with it, you know, I mean, teams are going to come back at us. Um, they're probably not in playoff contention, so they're just getting after it. They just want the win. We kind of have more to play for, so it's like just trying to match the aggressiveness and just Try to stay together as a team because it gets tiring out there. It was hot tonight as well. <laughs> we had a season high. It was actually a career high of 27 points. So as the leader of this team, how good did it feel to come up big for the team when they needed it the most? I mean, I just kind of, I don't even know how many points I have. I just want my team to win at the end of the day. So The women's team was looking to take down Crosstown rival Regis University at the Auraria Event Center. The Roadrunners start out hot with the jumper by Janae squires Horton and the nice drive and finish by Jalen Smith. But Mary Sigler keeps Regis in it with a three, and she would finish the night with 21 points. Squires Horn remains hot offensively, finishing the night with 24 points, four rebounds, and two steals. There is no stopping the Red and Blues offense, and they just go bucket after bucket after bucket. Then a steal by Squires Horton, and on the other end, Squires Horn with a quick layup. Regis fights to stay alive as Majesty Robinson does work for her team, finishing with 22 points on the night. But it just isn't enough as MSU Denver beats Regis at home 67-61. to Senior night at the Auraria Event Center. Women looking to finish their home sked off strong. Start off with some J-Win handles. Drives right, 
cuts left, drives up and in on V-Hill, showing off the chops. UCCS pushing back though, Hernandez leads the break and she takes it herself. Next time Hernandez has V-Hill with her and she sets up her teammate. Mountain Lions battling. Smith dishing to Tago now, she shoot, wait, she drives and Tago showing off the moves on senior night. But you can't forget about Ordorf. Top of the key, sound familiar? It should. She drives in, gets the contact, the foul, the bucket, vintage Georgia Ordorf, and the runners take care of business. I mean, not only their senior night, but we're playing UCCS. We're ready. We're, we were pumped before the game even started. I mean, they're one of our big, I mean, rivals, and they're really physical with us, and we just, we wanted to go at them. I think we were able to stay together. You know, they came at us, but we were all able to, like, really rely on each other and just keep pushing, so, yeah. Our main thing before the game was to play for each other. It's one of our last times playing together, so we went all out, stuck to the game plan, and pulled out the win. I just think we were confident, we attacked, we d defended well, we ran the ball well, we had limited turnovers, I don't know how many turnovers we ended up with, 11. So we, you know, we were just able to really just take it at them and we just didn't sit back. Here are the final regular season standings in the RMAC and they are brought to you by the Auraria Bookstore. The women went 5-2 and two in the month of February and finished 6th in the conference and will take on UC Colorado Springs in Colorado Springs to start the playoffs. Tune in to next month's show as we'll bring you all the highlights from the conference tournament. Or you can visit RoadrunnersAthletics.com to follow Ordorf and Smith as they look to bring home some hardware. Sean, it's basketball season, it's playoff time. There's no better combination, and I'm so excited to see how our teams do in the playoff run. Yeah, absolutely. That women's squad is rolling right now, and it's the first time in the conference tournament in three years for them. Couldn't be more excited for Coach Tanya Habe and that squad. Can agree with you more, Sean. So, basketball season is now getting ready for the playoffs, but that just means that softball season is getting underway. Head coach Annie Van Wetzinga began their title defense this past month and the bats are already booming. So come on back to see the offense already hitting its midseason form. Red and blue squad and she will line this one down the field and that's why one will be gone. It had home run distance, was not sure if it was going to stay fair. But just like that, the first hit of the day for the Roadrunners. Metropolitan State University of Denver nurtures student aspiration and empowers lifelong success through personal attention and professional experience in an inclusive environment. Located in the heart of downtown Denver, the university offers broad access to a transformative undergraduate and graduate education on Colorado's most diverse college campus. And as a gateway to opportunity, MSU Denver advances the intellectual, social, cultural, and economic well-being of Denver and beyond. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. To identify situations in which sexual assault may occur. To recognize that non-consensual sex is sexual assault. I pledge. I pledge. To create an environment in which sexual assault is unacceptable and survivors are supported. To intervene in situations where consent has not or cannot be given. Thanks for coming back. And for us broadcasters, it is so nice to get out of this stuffy Auraria Event Center and hit out the softball and baseball fields where we are able to enjoy the 70 degree weather in February and get a nice little tan, Sean. Tell me not, tell me not. Celeste, guys like me, we don't tan. We burn. <laughs> and it has been unseasonably warm as of late, but you know what, I wouldn't get too comfortable because it's Colorado, you know it's spring, know. you know the snow is going to come back with a vengeance. But the softball team, however, took full advantage of that sunshine as they began their 2017 campaign against Nebraska Kearney at home. Freshman Darby McGee made her collegiate debut while the Roadrunners took on the Lopers of Nebraska Kearney. McGee with a slow start as UNK gets some hits to go up 3-0 in the first inning. But, but no need to fear because McGee records her first strikeout of her collegiate career and she would go on to finish with six strikeouts on the game. And on the offensive end, Krista Terry hits it deep to center field, hitting the fence for a triple. Then repeat that triple by Tess Hass to bring in the run. And MSU Denver's offense remains hot to bring in some extra runs and it would be too much for Nebraska Nebraska Kearney as they fall to MSU Denver 9-3. The softball squad gets conference play underway against CSU Pueblo. Serena Espinoza drives this to deep center field off the wall and Lovas scores. First ribby of the conference season. 
Annika Anderson back up the middle, nice piece of hitting, and she picks up the run. Now swinging bunt from Kim, show off those wheels safe at first, but no one's covering home, and that allows the runners to get the run home from second. Cassie Smith at the dish now, cranks it to deep center, and I mean jolts it. No doubt, two run blasts, and it's all red and blue. Espinoza at the dish, she bloops it out to left, and it gets past the left fielder, and Anderson will come all the way from first to home, and the runners run rule the Thunderwolves 9-1 in game one. Game two for the CSU Pueblo series and Haley Field starts on the mound for MSU Denver and she gets the strikeout in the circle and then on the offensive end Cassidy Smith with a deep hit to right center for the triple and that'll just be the start of it for the red and blue offense to score in some runs early in the game but CSU Pueblo doesn't give up too quick as they're able to bring in a few runs. The Roadrunners will continue a solid offense and defeat the Thunderwolves 10-4. great to be home, um, especially the first weekend of opening Armac for us. I was really glad we were here. Um, I thought we played really hard considering a lot and we played really well last weekend. I think we carried that into this weekend, today even so much, yeah. For sure. So what's in that first game? You came up with the win. What worked well for you in that first game? I think I threw lots of change-ups and I think that they couldn't really uh, handle those, but then my defense, of course, always has my back. How much pride do you take in your defense? Seems like your cat-like reflexes out there. It seems like you've been working on that for years. No, defense is my... Defense is the reason why we're so successful, for sure. I trust them with all my heart, and I couldn't do it without them. Well, I think well, we had different people up and down the lineup stepping up. That was that's huge, you know. If you don't always have to rely on the same people, it takes a, a lot of pressure off, you know. And so, yeah, one through nine, uh, both games we were having different people step up, um, coming up with big hits with two outs. Also, yeah. um, we were able to kind of push it base running as well. I think you know, I think our non-conference schedule helped us too. We saw some really good pitching. Um, when we're on the road, and so I think that can, you know can help us now get into conference. So Sean, our softball team is off to an incredible start to the season. So let's see if they can continue that and hopefully defend that RMAC title. Yeah, picking up those four conference wins over CSU Pueblo, who they beat in the title game uh, last year. So really showing off that they're still an RMAC powerhouse. Yeah, no doubt about it. So while the softball team is off and running in their new season, the baseball team is geared up and ready for the brand new 2017 campaign and we'll have all the highlights from their great start. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect. It's the name of the game. Met Radio on MyMetMedia.com We're back here on the Road Runner Review, and remember that you can follow us on Twitter to get score updates, times, and dates for upcoming events, and for highlight videos from games, the Coach's Corner, and of course, the replay of the show. Yeah, so make sure you go on Twitter, find us at Metro ST Sports, and give us a follow. Now, let's get into some baseball as the Red and Blue kicked off their sparkly new season, and we bring back Juan Ariano to bring us all the highlights. Thanks, Celeste, and there's nothing more exciting than opening day in baseball, and our Roadrunners welcome in Nebraska Kearney to the Regency Athletic Complex to finally fire in their first pitches of the new season. The first pitches were a bit rusty for the home team as the Lopers took a 6-0 lead through the first two innings. Dallas Schramm blasted this pitch into left center field to give Carney the big advantage. But the red and blue would battle back. Nick McCaskey goes opposite field to drive in Sean Kennedy. And it's McCaskey again who rips the single into the center field and MSU Denver is down just 6-5. And the Roadrunners rally all the way back to take the 12-7 victory. See what we're made of, you know, the flaws that we need to fix and the things that we did good and we just go over it throughout the week. The opening weekend just kind of like a tester, see what we did wrong and what we can get better at. Yeah, I mean, that's our motto. We just, we never want to give up. It just character is our biggest thing. And yeah, no matter what we're down or how many outs we have left, we're going to try and win a ball game. Um, it's nice. I had surgery in November, so it was huge for me to get back out here, but really it was my teammates. I mean, they're in the dugout, they're yelling at me, you know, so that just helps me, you know, get through it all. The Cougars from Sioux Falls came to downtown Denver and the home team gave them problems from the mound. Junior left-handed pitcher Beecher Strubey 
was solid striking out six batters, giving us just three runs in six innings. The offense was spurred by junior Kel O'Donnell, who emptied the bases full of roadrunners with one sing at the bat with the stand-up double. Tony Yacoveta came in and shut down the Cougars for the final three innings, giving up just two hits to secure the save. And Mr. Denver takes a 6-4 victory. Sioux Falls would get on the board first in Game 2 with Trevor Crow getting all of this pitch for the solo shot in the second inning. With the runner on first, O'Donnell is money again driving in Jake Eggman with the triple. Hunter Donaldson then singles in O'Donnell to put MSU Denver ahead 2-1. Jay Rewa gets on his horse for a triple of his own driving in another Cougars run. Then it's Crow again who puts his team up 4-2 with the RBI single in the 8th. Bottom of the 8th now and Donaldson heads to 2nd and Sioux Falls has him in a rundown. But there comes O'Donnell from the 3rd. He's heading for home and he barely beats out the tag to tie the game at 4. We head into extra innings but it's the Cougars who scored 3 runs in the top of the 11th to steal away the 7-4 win. So next month, Coach Otis and his squad will kick off conference play as they look to make a return appearance to the RMAC playoffs after missing it last season. Remember that you can watch MSU Denver Baseball on stretch internet at RoadrunnersAthletics.com. We're coming right back with our best plays from this past month. You don't want to miss that. The Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference is committed to sportsmanship. We take pride in the conduct of our student athletes and coaches. And ask that everyone, coaches, athletes, and spectators, treat opponents and officials with respect. We encourage you to cheer for your favorite team. Unruly, threatening, or obscene behavior will not be condoned. Thank you for your cooperation and support. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. crunch time here on the Road Runner Review and you know Sean and I just get so excited watching these student athletes they're hitting home runs crushing kills dunking the basketball all that fun stuff but at some point you just get tired of watching and you just want to be one of those student athletes yeah I mean it's a lot of fun yeah. to be behind the mic for those spectacular plays but sometimes you just want to make those spectacular plays and get on that demo reel so we took our turn and we took on some women's basketball players in a three-point contest can't be that hard right Celeste no comment no comment What's up guys? Thanks for tuning in to this episode of NARPS. I'm Sean Tafoya. And I'm Celeste Zubia. Okay. We're going to be going up against women's basketball sharpshooters, Janae Squires-Horton and Janae Payne. There's Squires-Horton, a three-point shot up and good! It ties the game at 57! Seven on the shot clock, Janae Payne takes the contested three and what do you expect right between the eyes, Janae Payne? Sports, we just report on her. Morning! 
Well, Sean, not our best performance on the basketball court, so let's bring in some performances that do deserve to be in our top play segment. Our top five plays from the past month are brought to you by the Regency. Play number five comes from Jalen Smith, who continues to shine in her sophomore season. Again, Shadron State Smith drives and stops the tape. The defender is bracing herself to take the charge, roll that tape, but Smith dances around her for the easy layup. Smith is so crafty when it comes to attacking the rim, and perhaps next time, defenders won't just let her go by for some easy points. Smith makes it look so easy. We'll head out to the diamond and play number four. True freshman Jerome Bohannon the second came into his first ever collegiate game and put up a prime time performance. The Aurora, Colorado native pitched five innings of scoreless baseball while using his ridiculous curveball to strike out five lopers. Not bad for his first ever appearance at the college level. That's just great recruiting by head coach Jared Otis. How about another great pitching performance by a true freshman, but this time it comes from softball as Darby McGee came into her first ever collegiate start to earn the win. The California native ran into a little bit of trouble in the first inning, giving up three runs. But the right-hander would find her rhythm and would keep Nebraska Kearney off the board for the rest of the game. McGee gave up just six total hits while striking out six slopers to help secure the 9-3 win. It's so exciting to watch the future of Roadrunner Sports excel so early in their MSU Denver careers. From a couple of freshmen to a seasoned veteran, senior pitcher Cassie Smith brought her A game to open up the conference play against CSU Pueblo. The righty went a full six innings, giving up just three hits and one run in earning the win. Smith's defense was also working for her, keeping those Thunderwolves off the base paths. It's one thing to be great from the circle, but it's another thing to help out your own cause as Smith goes yard for the two-run round tripper to help lead her team to the 9-1 run rule victory. Is it too early to talk player of the year in the conference? And the top play from this past month comes from women's basketball and the career day from Georgia Ordorf. The junior from Australia scored a career best 27 points and carrying her team to the win over Shadron State at home. Ordorf did a lot of her damage in the paint, grabbing offensive rebounds and bullying her way to the rim. But she also has range connecting on jump shots as well. There was no one who could stop the junior on this day and don't be surprised if Ordorf earns first team all conference after this performance. Those were the top plays from this past month and as always they are brought to you by the Regency. That's going to wrap up another edition of the Roadrunner Review and make sure you keep up on MSU Denver Sports at roadrunnersathletics.com. That's right Sean and be sure to tune in to next month's show as we will have all the highlights from both our men's and women's basketball playoff run. For Sean Tafoya, Juan Arellano and Celeste Zubia, we'll see you guys next month. So Sean, you could go make my sandwich now. Turkey, extra mustard, I know how much you love mustard. Hey, make that too. Bye Sean. Bye. <laughs>